Hi, my name is Frederick Chipkin. Welcome to my class on Spot Channels Demystified. Before diving into Spot Channels, you should be comfortable with all the basic techniques that I taught in my previous lessons. Now, it's important to note that as a textile designer, you may not even need to master Spot Channels. My classes were created for textile designers and not for engravers and working with spot channels in general is a job that's done at the engravers. Creating or converting a design into spot channels is one of the final steps before actually engraving the screens for textile production. Compared with other techniques, working with spot channels is more technical and tedious than working with layered or index designs, which most textile designers work with. However, because spot channels are widely used by engravers, knowing how to work with them will give you, the textile designer, a valuable design edge and will help you to communicate your ideas with the people who are engraving your design. Now, once in a while, an artist may receive a design that has been converted to spot channels by a textile engraver or mill, only to be told that the engraver or mill doesn't know how his artist created them. But you as a textile designer are magically expected to recognize what spot channels are and to even be able to work with them a bit. Therefore, in this situation, simply knowing a basic skill like how to change a spot channel's color can be very, very useful. Now there's no mystery to spot channels. There's only a simple set of rules that once mastered will give you yet another design tool at your disposal. Now before we begin the lesson, on this page I provided a link so you can download the practice images that go along with this lesson. So pause the lesson, get your practice images, and we'll continue. Don't forget to save these files to a location on your computer we can easily find them again. Now let's look closely at one of the designs you had just downloaded called Channel Sample. Now, one spot channel can include both solid portions of a color and several lighter, transparent tones of the same color. This is pretty much the same thing that happens when you print on fabric. For example, Imagine that you're screen printing a blue watercolor flower on a piece of fabric. A single screen can print both a solid, saturated blue along with several lighter washes or half tones of the same blue. This is why spot channels are so valuable to an engraver, because they mimic what actually happens on fabric. Therefore, an engraver can actually use a design that's been converted to spot channels to cut screens from. Don't be confused, don't think about it too much, just follow along with me and you'll get the concept. So at this point, please pause the lesson and open up the design channel sample from the folder where you had previously downloaded your practice images. Note that this design has already been converted to spot channels. Now we're going to adjust the preferences a little bit. Let's click on Edit, or on a Mac, click on Photoshop, Preferences, General, and make sure that the image interpolation is set to nearest neighbor, Preserve Hard Edges. Then go to Interface over here, and in the dialog box that pops up, Put a check mark next to Show Channels in Color. Then click OK to close the dialog box. Then on top of your window, go to Window, and then down to Channels. The Channels panel should now appear on your screen. Now let's click on the tab over here and merge the channels panel 
with the Layers panel, like so. And then click here and close this panel. Now we're going to adjust the quick mask so that it functions properly. So let's click on the icon in the bottom of the toolbox to open up the quick mask options dialog box. Then let's click here so that selected areas is selected. After you do this, I want you to change the opacity to 100% and then click OK. And then click once more on the quick mask icon at the bottom of the toolbox to turn quick mask off. Okay, now that our channel preferences and mask settings are set and our channel panel is placed correctly, we're going to close the image on our screen. And then once more, we're going to open the file called channel sample. Now there's a really simple reason why I'm closing and opening this file again. And I'll explain why I'm doing this later in the lesson. In a little section called clarification, why did I do that? Now we're going to get to know the channels panel a little bit better. Let's look at the channels panel. These top four boxes here are called color channels. In general, we're not going to be working with color channels too much. These bottom boxes here are called spot channels. These are the main channels that we're going to be working with in this lesson. Now I'm going to say something that sounds a bit crazy. Again, don't think too much. Just follow along with me here. In the channels panel, the bottom spot channel is layered at the top of the print and the top spot channel is layered at the bottom of the print. Don't worry, I'll give you an example now that will clear things up a bit. In the channels panel, the dark purple over here is below the light purple over here. However, in the print, the dark purple is actually layered above the light purple. Now I want you to click on the eye icons in the channel panel, turning each channel off and on the way I'm doing here, and simply observe visually which colors are layered above and below which colors in the print. Now changing the color of a spot channel couldn't be simpler. The first thing we're going to do is change the dark purple spot channel in the print to a dark red. On the channels panel, double click on the thumbnail next to the words dark purple. When you do this, the spot channel options dialog box will pop up. Now if you click on the color box next to the word color, the color picker will pop up. Now you can pick an exact shade of red simply by changing the HSB values found over here. Or in this case, I think I'm going to pick a nice red from the color field on the left. When you're done, click on OK and then give your color a name. and then click OK again. Now I'm going to repeat the same steps for a few more colors, just to take you through the process a few more times.
Okay, so now if you ever need to change or correct a few colors on a few spot channels, now you know how it's done. Okay, so earlier in the lesson, I told you that there was a reason why I closed the file and then opened it again after adjusting the quick mask. The reason why is simple. If you turn the quick mask on and off, for some reason, it selects all the channels. And then if I double click on one of the channels, like so, in order to change the color, it isolates that particular channel which would only serve to bewilder and confuse someone who's just beginning to learn about spot channels. So, the easiest way to take away any confusion is to close the file and then to open it again. And then you're good to go with the rest of the techniques that I'm gonna show you in this lesson. Now, here's a point to ponder. As a textile designer, changing the colors of a spot channel may be all you really need to know about spot channels. Engravers will sometimes send a design to their client in spot channels so that their client, usually a manufacturer, can give it to their textile designer to play with or adjust the colors. In fact, changing colors in spot channels is their most common use for a textile designer. However, since you are a designer, you may want to know more than just how to change colors. Maybe you want to be able to create spot channels yourself. Maybe you want to be able to change the shape or completely redraw a motif. Maybe you want to be able to check the repeat of a design that's done in spot channels. Maybe you simply want to be able to see a printout of a design that's been converted into spot channels. There's a little trick to that. Or maybe you're curious on how to convert spot channels into halftones. So as a textile designer, if you're curious about these things, the rest of this lesson will take the mystery away. <laughs>